stable video is in private beta, but I have access, so I'm gonna go through and show you all the different things that it can do. You can also join the waitlist at stablevideo.com. All right, since this is in private beta, I'm just gonna take a moment to walk through the interface because I'm sure people might be curious about that. It's pretty straightforward. You can click generate here, or you can start with an image or start with text. So these basically all go to the same place. So let's just click generate up at the top. Here's the image. Um, pretty straightforward, you would just click here to um, select an image, and then you would generate a video from that, which I'll do in a minute. All right, this is the text screen, and you'll notice it says describe your image, because what it's gonna do is generate four images. You're gonna pick one of those four images and generate a video from it. So you're not actually generating a video right from the screen. You're first generating an image, then you're gonna generate a video from that image. So it really is a workflow where you're going text to image, image to video, rather than text to video. And for the most part, I think that's a good thing. I think people are more inclined to do image to video when it comes to video generation. All right, so here's the aspect ratios, pretty straightforward. You have widescreen, portrait, and square. Um, there are a bunch of these different styles that you can choose from. And then this is where your credits are. So you get 150 and then they refresh every 24 hours. Then below your generation section, you have this community showcase. So there's featured and then there's popular. Um, they're pretty similar right now because it's all in beta. Um, but the interesting thing about this is, well, it tells you how it's generated from image or from text. And then if you want to see that, you can just click into that video if you like that video, you can say, hey, I wanna do one similar. You can click show prompt and it shows you what their prompt was. Um, if there was any camera motion, which is surprising, I thought that there was actually camera motion in there, but it just added some. It shows you the seed um, for people who wanna create some consistency, how many steps in the motion strength. So if you wanted to use one, you could just click use this prompt. And it hasn't deducted the things yet, but it just puts the prompt in there and you might wanna say, African elephant, like riding a motorcycle or something. Or you may want to change the style and make it a 3D African elephant. One thing I notice about a lot of the community ones are like this prompt is very basic, just Aurora Borealis. This one is just simply a seasoned man on the road, a penguin surfing waves in the ocean on a surfboard. This is the most elaborate prompt that I've seen in the community section. Let's combine some of these. Um, an African elephant watching the Aurora Borealis with a seasoned man. Let's just see what happens here. So we'll click generate images. So we used our text prompt and we have four images now. Um, one thing I've noticed is that there's not really a library yet, like where all of these would be saved. So if you liked all of them, but you chose one and you wanted to come do the other one later, I'm not really sure how you get these images. So the best thing to do is go through and just download these one by one when you get the images, just in case you need them later, because then you can upload them and use them as image to video. Right now there's not like an asset library of all of these images that you've generated. So if you, if you don't save them now, you're gonna lose them. All right, so let's click into this one. All right, let's just choose orbit. Um, one thing you'll notice is that you cannot, at least right now, you can't combine any of these camera moves. So you pick one and that's the one that you get. Down here, there's the advanced options, which is just if you have a specific seed you want, the steps and the motion strength that you wanna use. I'm just gonna keep these all at default for now. Shows in my image, I've picked my camera motion, I'm gonna click proceed. This is really fascinating to me and I'll tell you why. So for right now, they're just asking for feedback. Which one do you like better? Trying to get a sense of like what's working, what's not. I think it's helping fine tune the model. And I think this is great. Like I encourage you, if you are in the beta to vote for things, I vote for things. This is how we get things to become better if we all participate, right? So here's what I think is fascinating about this. All of this stuff is really expensive and no one's gonna be able to offer a free tier. But I made a prediction in December that someone's gonna try to experiment with an advertising based tier. If you picture seeing a screen like this, where you're having to, where you're watching an advertisement before you can generate things, I feel like this is laying the groundwork for that. And I'm not sure if that's what they're actually planning, but it's, it really feels like this could very easily be two different advertisers and I would need to watch one of their ads before it would show me my generated video. You know, my first reaction is I don't wanna see ads when I'm generating videos. But on the other hand, I have to remember that being able to afford these tools isn't within everyone's reach. So there, there should be a way um, for people to have access to these tools and this technology 
through a free method. And I know you're probably saying like, well, you could just download Stable Diffusion on a computer, but then you have to have a computer fast enough to run um, Stable Diffusion. To me, if this is an attempt to move things toward um, an advertising-based tier, I, what I hope is that it will open it up to more people being able to use it. And then I'm sure if you're at like one of the paid tiers, you wouldn't see ads or you wouldn't see as many ads potentially. The reason I think that's big is because image and video generation tools are becoming like the new social media where you spend time on them creating things and then you spend a little bit of time elsewhere looking at them. But most of your time is spent creating, iterating on the actual generation platform itself. So I think that you're going to see a shift where people are going to want to be able to advertise where people are spending their time. Oh, here's our elephant and our person with Aurora Borealis. You know, it, there, there's a good foreground background separation. There's not a lot of blur. I wish that there was a little bit more motion on the elephant. So let's try this. Let's go here. We had motion strength 127 last time. Let's use this prompt. And you'll see I don't have like the motion settings here, um, but it remembers the image. So if I go to the image here, now I have those advanced settings again. I can go in here and I can change the motion and make it like, you know, 200, let's say, just to have it be different. And then I click generate. Oh, and here's the other thing. So when it's generating, there's in your history, there's this in progress queue. And you'll see you have one of 10. So there'll be 10 spots. So if you were going to do a bunch of these rapidly, um, you would only have 10 generation spots. I haven't um, actually done that yet where I've gone more than 10. Um, but I think if you were just like on a tear and generating things, you're going to be limited to 10 active generations at a time. This is interesting. I increased the motion and we have a lot of background noise now. Um, it's not doing the orbit at all. So this is a good example of maybe the default motion setting is a good place to start. Right, I'm going to do one of a young, unconventional spy. I was definitely testing it out with using the term spy, but not specifying a gender. Um, and it looks like, you know, up at the top, this is kind of what you would expect to see. But this is a pretty androgynous looking spy. And this one over here definitely presents as female. So I feel like we have like a mini spectrum of gender going on here. It's, it's not huge, but you know. I get one camera. I'm going to go to orbit again. And it's pretty good. I like this one. I think stable video does really good with these portraits where you're just orbiting around the person and there's something in the background. It did that with the elephant um, in the Aurora Borealis. It did it with this spy. So it's not a lot of motion in the same way that you get motion in other text to video editors, but it's adding like a, you know, sort of a panning effect. All right, so I'm gonna try this. An enigmatic podcaster searching for the truth in a small town. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is generate the image. So this is a good example of like, all right, I'm not happy with these at all, right? It's really hard to um, to redo it. You know, like there's not a way to um, generate some more sample ones. So I'm gonna go back to generate. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna paste that again. I'm still gonna keep it a little bit vague. So I'm gonna choose a style here, cinematic, and generate the image. The act of generating these images is what takes away the credits. The good part is when I go to generate the video, I've already used the credits for that generation. That's pretty good. The one thing I want to point out is how well it keeps the shape of his face on this pan because he's definitely moving. Like we're seeing, we're seeing some change in his face there. So I think this is great. All right, now let's try an image. This is one that I generated through stable video. Um, and if you'll see, it's 1024 by 576. And right here it says that's one of the preferred sizes. Over here, when you have your aspect ratios, 1024 by 576 is the landscape. 576 by 1024 is the portrait. And 768 by 768 is the square. If you're generating images somewhere else and you're doing them 16 by 9, that should be fine. All right, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to do a little bit of motion, not too much more, but 165. All right, this is why I think it's important when you type in your text prompt and you generate your images, I think it's important to download these. I get four images from that 10 credits, and it would be nice to be able to upload all four of these as image to video, but it really is only saving the one that you click. The other thing I would like to be able to do is I chose comic book as the style and these are definitely not comic books. So I wish that I could like 
how you can vote on the community stuff. I wish I could vote on these and say, no, this isn't the right style and, and help train it that way a little bit. Because these, I would like to have had two more that look similar to this. Since I downloaded those, I can choose the other one now and do the same thing here. See our comic book cats here. That was, <laughs> this is not good. I like that one. Although it's watch the sun. So it's, it's trying to do a different kind of reflection there, but still not bad. So I'm doing this for test purposes only. If you look on the Stable Diffusion Reddit, like 90% of it is not safe for work images. So I just want to see how Stable Video handles a prompt like this. And it says it's been flagged as inappropriate. So there are content guidelines and they list, here's where you can see about the content guidelines. I think that's a sign that this is really something that's more uh, commercially focused. Uh, they're going after businesses and things like that. So that's stable video. I really believe this is going to be the new social media. This is where people are going to spend all of their time not consuming media, but generating media. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like and share and all of that stuff.